better though, this terrific two-year-old trying hard Ultimate Machete, but uh, more the better, more the better Mark Purden coming back Ultimate Machete, more the better will beat him out though. The NRM Equijewel two-year-old Emerald was the sixth on the program. Uh, let's go back and take it in as the gate was about to roll here, Craig, and uh, there was not as much speed off the front line as we probably anticipated. No, they came out in pretty much a line. Mitch McGuire from Barrier 1 obviously came out the best. A decent crack out wide here from Mongolian Hero to get across. and. Looks like he's going to get to the park position, but Scott Feeling kicks up here with the Lone Ranger and holds him three wide for the, probably the next 600 metres. At this point, Pacing Major's trying to get off the, off the trail. Can't do it. The gap's not there to get off, so he's stuck on the fence. The eventual winner in the yellow colours, the Harness Jewels colours, is back third to last. But a lot of pressure early here, Greg, and what happens or what unfolds in the next 200 metres uh, is paramount to the race. Yeah, of course, the Lone Ranger, he hadn't got it right uh, in recent starts, Michael, and unfortunately for his connections, and a couple around him, he got it wrong right about now. Yep, sure did, rolled into a gallop. Um, look, I think Natalie Rasmussen probably could have pushed off here on pacing major at this stage if she had been super aggressive, even there. But she probably thought, well, this far into the race, Mango's going to stay in front. But Brent decided here, probably quite rightly, because he's driving for himself, he's not driving for Nat, hands up to Ultimate Machete, that's almost a race-winning move. Tim Williams could not have driven this horse any better. It just wasn't good enough because it was stalked into the race, the more the better. I think like everybody on track, including Aaron, and his cool, once more the better got up outside this horse, you thought it would run clean past it. But maybe this is a typical last race of the season. Maybe he's been to the well plenty of times and he's just on a slight downslope. Really interesting finish and pacing major gets out a la Dream About Me and Storm's Lake. But pretty hard to argue the best horse didn't win the race. To the lead, 200 to go. More the better from Ultimate Machete. Mitch Maguire pacing majors out and looking to run. More the better though, this terrific two year old trying hard Ultimate Machete. But uh, more the better, more the better Mark Purden coming back Ultimate Machete. More the better will beat him out though. And for the legend of our sport too, and Roy Purden gets a jewel and it's an emerald with more the better. Ultimate Machete. Yeah, so he's had an amazing season. Uh, six wins, four seconds, and uh, over $300,000 in the bank. We're now rolling some footage though and we've already seen this a couple of times uh, Craig during the day. It almost all unravelled in, in front of him didn't well, it? it? Nearly went pear shaped here at about the 800 metre mark when the Lone Ranger gallops it's a bit of a chain reaction. You can see Mark's been pushed four wide here as uh, getting around the outside of Rhythm and Blues here. Luckily Ultimate Bichetti comes out as well and he gets a drag three wide but those very, wheels, very those, they, they could have locked stays They could have locked stays, and as you said, a lot of things could have unfolded, but he's been a very good horse. 10 starts, 6 one, 4 seconds. you got to remember, that was a track record coming from the second row, on top of two New Zealand records prior to that, and $350,000. Um, he deserves to be two-year-old of the year. On Mitch Maguire, sold to Perth, understand, during the week, and he'll race for Greg Bond. Yeah, Greg and Sky Bond. Um, I know you touched on it on the day, but one of the coolest moments of the day... Uh, he should be Sir Roy Purden, and, and, yeah. and he enjoyed the moment, I'm sure. Look, he should be. Um, if Roy Purden was a galloping trainer, he would be Sir, Sir Roy Purden. The Queen obviously loves the gallops far more than she loves the trots. <laughs> um, he watched the race at home. Roy did, um, had a whiskey and water afterwards to celebrate. I'm picking he probably had a couple. Um, these days, as he said, I get arthritis in the shoulder and the knees. It's just too cold to go watch the races. Um, great to see a guy who has been, probably has had the most significant footprint on our industry with another very good horse at the age of 89. He's a derby horse. Um, he will now head to the paddock. I'm really surprised by that. I thought they would go to the Breeders' Crown because he would be favourite to win the Breeders' Crown. But they are saying, look, let's put him in the paddock. He's a derby horse. So is Ultimate Machete, who's very much the unfinished product. And little pacing major, who was unlucky there, he'll be the one who heads to the Breeders' Crown. But um, yeah, I think maybe along with Sam Otley, the feel-good story of the day. Um, two people at very different ends of their careers, Sam Otley and Roy Purden, but two of the feel-good stories of Jules Day. All right, before we analyse some of the other runs, let's hear from those in behind more the better. Well, Tim, it looks as though he's just about on par with these two now. Yeah, no, that'd be a fair comment. Today was a big run and, uh, yeah, taking up and away from the other two Colts, you know, 
chase them around for the last four or five starts. Just can't quite get past them, but you know the gap's getting smaller and smaller. Pacing major and more, the better look natural to your olds. Would it be a fair comment to say that your guy's got six months written all over him? Oh, for sure. You know, you look at him and uh, he's a big rangy colt. So, and what he's doing this year, it's going to stand him in great stead for next season. Natalie, just talk us through the run that you got in transit. Oh, just, yeah, he had a pretty good trip, really. Um, just got a little bit held up, probably, from the 400 around to the 200. But, um, you know, he finished on great. I, I was really pleased with him. Take more the better out, and you'd probably be saying he's the best two-year-old. Oh, probably, yeah. More the better's a great little horse, too, you know. Um, I just think, you know, he just sort of probably, you know, was off the fence and not caught up in traffic and just, yeah, that showed. And I thought um, Ultimate Machete was excellent, too. You know, he made his own luck as well. All right, what about these three guys? Um, is, is there any immediate plans for them? Not really, mate. Like I said, we'll just get through, um, get through today then do a reassess reprogram nice enough run there brent for a speedy wee horse yeah pretty good run mate i got hammered that first half mile which probably cost him running a closer fourth you know he's um he's gone really good to stick on to where he did and um yeah good handy run do you have any immediate plans for him a bit tired i think he'll have to go out the paddock but uh, maybe he'll, yeah he'll have a couple of months off for now and um bring him back and uh, see what happens yeah well that decision now is uh, the wa base of greg and sky bond of course uh Honourable mention here to the Mongolians, Hero and Storm, both of them very good. Yeah, I thought both of them huge runs. Um, didn't get a lot of luck in the running, especially Mongolian Hero, to get as close as he did after sitting three wide for a major part of the race. Um, very good training performance, Paul Court. These horses have been up for a long season, but they'll progress to the three-old ranks and they'll be very, very competitive as long as those Purden horses aren't there. All right, let's move to the seventh, uh, the aptly named Sovereignty, three-year-old Ruby. Better Gretsch the filly has Markula flat out. He's galloped Markula and now Wilmer's made on the passing lane. Donegal, Better Gretsch and Wilmer's made the two fillies to fight it out. But Donegal, Better Gretsch. It's on the up we go. Three-year-old filly by Better's Delight. Uh, if you didn't know, you'd be looking for her in a pacing race, but of course she couldn't pace or very fast at all, so uh, she was put uh, uh, to the trotting gate. Uh, just took the hobbles off one day, Michael, and, and seen what happened, and, and she trotted beautifully. Quite remarkably out of a Christian colour mare too, so that's the golden pacing breed. <laughs> it happens to be on a trotter. This was a mammoth. If you've got a bigger word at home, I couldn't think of it, maybe gargantuan. Look at the uh, dictionary. Um, it's a big performance, boys. It's come out here. It's just absolutely attacked Miss Andai, broken its heart into pieces, and kept on going. The way she won this, if she had sat parked like this in 157 and 14th, you'd be going, what a filly this. Um, aided by the fact that Mark Hall was back in the field, but he got close enough, Craig, to have a shot at her. He got a fair shot at her. He looked like later on we'll see he might have balked at the whip. But to be honest, I don't think he was getting past you. This is an absolute no excuses job. No, absolutely. Um, Clint Ford moved it at this point of the race three wide, and he, he got outside uh, Donegal Better Gretsch. Um, Greg, and I probably thought at the 400 metre mark, this race is his because he stayed out of the early rush as against Donegal Better Gretsch and Missando. I'd gone their first quarter in 27 seconds. They were set up to be run down. And the other one we want to mention is Wilma's mate because she's getting on the back of the Harness Jewels colours now after being a mile back. And it was a great drive by David Buck. He went three wide to the trail on the final bend. Uh, it looked the winner at the 200 metre mark getting up the passing lane. But this filly, uh, we saw last week winning in, an, uh, in a national record time. She's obviously gone on with it a week later, Greg. Yeah, Missandei rolls into a gallop there. So last year's uh, Ruby winner out of play. And there were a few others that were gone burger at that stage. And it turned out to be what we thought a three-horse war uh, with Conan Bridge uh, back and forth. But right Right about now, uh, the favourite goes up to have a real shot at uh, Donegal Better Gretsch, rolls into a gallop as Aaron brings him home. Better Gretsch and Wilmers make the two fillies to fight it out, but Donegal Better Gretsch and Double D will take the sovereignty three-year-old Ruby in 157.1 from uh, Wilmers Bay. So a very brave performance. Uh, yeah, I'm with the boys. I'm not totally convinced that the favourite would have got passed anyway because she just kept on going at that speed. So let's hear from her trainer Crandell Getty. Joined by trainer Crandell Getty, pacing bred, very, very tough. The better's delight came out in her. 
Uh, yes, very unexpected. Uh, it was like, these are the thrill wins because you know we, we thought we could maybe run first four, but to win it and uh, to be driven like sort of Cardigan Bay, uh, but I, I don't say it the bad way, but uh, it just seemed to be the, the way to do it. Look, uh, a massive thrill training a Group One winner for Murray Boyd. He's been with your stable a while. Yes, he's a bit of a character. Uh, the Irish will come out tonight, no doubt. Um, laughs, laughs and drinks, laughs and drinks. He's one of those fellas, and uh, he'll enjoy this for, for years ahead. What about winning a race sponsored by uh, one of the greats of this game and Charlie Hunter? Um, that must be also a big thrill. Well, when I was a young fellow growing up, the, the Roy Purden and Charlie Hunter, they were the icons of the business, and uh, naturally they still are. And Roy to win a race here today and even be on the sponsorship of Charlie, it's a big thrill for me. Back to this horse, a month ago, she looked like she may well have hit a flat spot. You've clearly been able to get the best out of her here today, so the future's still pretty bright. Uh, yes, well, you're right about the flat spot, and uh, me being a bit of an amateur to training trotters, I don't know what I'm doing, but, uh, yeah, she, I knew she was very fit today, and we just kept her healthy during the week, and uh, Dex done the rest. Congratulations, you picked yourself up another jewel. Thank you. So Crandall Getty, first ever Group 1 trotting winner he's trained, owned by Murray Boyd, who's been a, a great supporter of the Del Getty barn, and of course uh, Cran's wife Chrissy, to complete uh, a great day for the Butt family. Of course, Chrissy's sister to both Tim and Roddy, so a magnificent day, and Anthony had flown in as well to take it all yeah, It was good to see Ants there, wasn't it? Um, Donegal better Gretsch now, you start thinking, what's next? Because why would you put it to the paddock? She's only a three-year-old, four-year-old trotting mares, nothing. We don't have any four-year-old trotting mares races at all, of any sort. So the New South Wales Derby has been put back to July 16. The way she's racing, and I think she's improved a length or two, I spoke to Cran yesterday, I tried to talk him to going. He can go there, and then he could go to the Vic Derby about August the 8th or the 6th. $75,000. I would take the money now. Who cares if she misses the entire of next season? Let's be honest. If she wins the Victoria Trotting Derby, I'd retire her. These three-year-old trotting fillies, unless they're exceptionally good, have no future as four-year-old mares. Unless we start scheduling once a month, Craig, mares only trotting races. Methvin's got one. Yeah. There's a couple in the north. But to be honest, these mares, Wilma's mate's the same. Yeah. You win two or three races, you're racing Mon Bay. Yeah. Forget that. Yeah, she'll come back as a C3 if she, if she was going out now. But, I mean, I agree with Michael. Four-year-old, there's very little breeder stakes maybe, but not, not a lot about. So maybe you need to cart a few more of them. Uh, runs out of the race and behind. One to watch out of that. Blazing under fire. Massive run. Goes around at Auckland on Friday night. Maybe have a look at that. All right. Uh, let's have a look at some of the key moments in the race as uh, the favourite, or one of the favourites, uh, Miss Sandai. She was second favourite. Uh, Gallops at this point. She was going to be out of play anyway. And as uh, we get to the home straight, uh, Mark Cooler up alongside. What, what odds here? What odds would you have put Mark Cooler going straight past? A month ago, he would have won by two. Um, Clint Ford's done nothing wrong. He posied up where he could only posse up in the run. He's avoided the trouble. He's given himself a chance on home straight. She, he did look to balk away from that whip. Um, be interested to see if Clint mentioned that in the uh, beaten drivers. Yep, all right. So uh, let's get to those who got closest to Donegal Better Gretsch. Paul, what would you put his improved performance down to today? Uh, well, I just changed his training around a bit, a little bit. He's a, he's a horse that can probably over race a little bit, but um, in hindsight, he's probably I let him freshen up a bit, and he did race a bit that way today. But maybe that's the way he goes best, you know. So he's he's gone real good. And Bob Bob actually said he's a wee bit stiff actually, just for that check around the last bend there. All right, and Wilma's mate when he, she went massive, didn't she? She went super. Yeah, she she got back early, and um, you know it's pretty hard to make up ground on a mile like that, and she just kept coming, so yeah, it was a great effort. All right, what about in terms of her and, and her tracking ability? Looks as though today she tracked a lot better. Uh, she's a lot, probably happier left-handed. Um, you know, right-handed right, right -handed at Auckland's just a bit awkward for her. Um, last, you know, when she raced up there, so... Yeah, no, she, when she gets a bit stronger too, probably you would like to think would help her. Do you have any immediate plans for either of these two? Um, well, they're both eligible for the Breeders' Crown, but... Um, We'll just think about that and, um, you know, either be there or a spell. I believe Sunny Afternoon's been sold to overseas investors. Uh, yes, yes, some people of, of um, clients of Brent Lilly's have, have bought her and she's going to head over there probably next week to uh, Victoria. Well, Bob, that was a, a much improved run today? Yeah, it did right, Matty. Um, best race has gone in a while and uh, showed a bit of his true worth and uh, 
got a bit keen, which he can do, but um, he's actually a bit stiff around the bend with the gallopers, so um, not to say that he would have won it, but uh, he would have been a lot closer, you know. Do you think this is his go, more the short course type of things now? Oh, definitely, well, it seems to be, but um, in saying that, he has had a couple of short races lately where he's been real disappointed, so let's just hope he's somewhere near back to his be, be, how good he was last year. Clint, take us back to the start of the race. What were your impressions off the gate? Uh, yeah, he didn't show any gate speed, so, you know, got back yep. too far, really, and had to do a fair bit of work from the 1,000 last round. Yep. Trotted a bit rough, just past the quarter and then into the straight. I thought I might have been able to hold on, but, yeah, just trying that a little bit too hard, I suppose, the last 100 metres and managed to break. All right. Is there, is there something you put that down to? Probably the preparation really hasn't been ideal with him being up in class. It's hard to find a race for him, you know. Yep. Um, so maybe he was a bit underdone. And we need to pick up on that point, Michael, because the preparation for these horses leading into the jewels is not always ideal. No, it's not ideal. And, and we need this is a change you need to make. I think the jewels works really well. This is a must. These horses, particularly the three-year-old trotters, um, wherever it's based, North Island, the week before, there needs to be a compulsory race because Mark Hall is shafted. He's C6. He can't race the open class horses to Alexandra Park without getting flattened, but there's no race for him. We need to say if Alexandra Park's the week before, they have to hold a race for every grade of horse who goes to the jewels. Now, the girls and the boys, the two-year-olds, are fine. They've raced through Addington, but he was disadvantaged by being too good. Next year, when it goes back to Ashburton, um, Addington should be made to race those. Just with him, he goes to the paddock. Paul Nians, too, uh, Melbourne's mate in Conan Bridge, they will stick around here, race and breed as crown heats, then probably go to the finals over there. Donegal Bedegrich, as I said, wouldn't be surprised to see who goes Sydney, then Melbourne. Yeah, nice honourable mention there to Paul Nian, too. Four place getters uh, at the Harness Jewels. Here's what Crandall Giddy had to say about his first ever Group 1 win and his thoughts around this series. Crane, firstly, I'd like to congratulate you, your first Group 1 trot. You must be feeling ecstatic. Well, it's actually extra special because it's a surprise. It was a long shot, or well, she was a long shot, so um, don't worry, I've taken a lot of $1.50 shots to the races and run midfield, and, uh, but to win with a long shot, a big race, uh, it is a thrill. All right, to win a Group 1 race, it requires an ideal preparation. Was hers, in your mind, an ideal prep? Uh, yes and no. Well, I have to say she was in great form because yeah. she won a class record last week at Alexandra Park and um, to, to go that quick a week out, sometimes you think, have I done too much with her? But um, she had a lot of base under her and she was very fit. So she's just been pampered this week, basically. What about the, the types of horses who come in with maybe only one or two runs under their belt due to, to finding it hard to be placed? Uh, well, we, we was always a left field one, like play on today, winning the Phillies race, you know, second start, and she was too dominant. So there's no right or wrong, really, but in saying that, um, you want a lot of base under. You want um, four to five months rather than three months, basically, of racing. The, the dual system as a whole, do you, do you think there's anything that maybe we could tinker with? Um, in general, I think it's fantastic. Now, we'll have arguments for both islands, whatever your hometown is, but the only little tinker I'd do, I'd probably make it a longer start, a 1,700 metre start here at Cambridge. Um, that's a little tinker. Um, and then, because we criticise um, short, short um, space to the first bend, um, but the, generally the cream always rises to the top, really, but that would make punters a little bit happy that they've got a chance of leaving the gate more, maybe 1,700 metre start. But in general, that's all I'd say.